Hi, welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgway, founder of the Amberlynn Files and Tudor Society. Um, I'm also author of several history books, including this one, which is actually the inspiration for these videos. Um, I used to be posting all the time um, on this day in Tudor history events, but I thought I'd do something a bit different uh, this year and do some video talks about them. So I'm going to take you back to 1554 today. Um, that, of course, is the reign of Queen Mary I, who was the eldest child of King Henry VIII and his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. So we're going to go back to the 26th of January 1554 when on this day Queen Mary I wrote to her half-sister, the future Queen Elizabeth I, who of course was the daughter of Henry VIII and Anne Boleyn, summoning her to the royal court and warning her about something that uh, was kind of happening in the background, uh, some trouble that was, uh, that was happening, Wyatt's Rebellion or Wyatt's Revolt. Elizabeth did not obey the summons to court. Um, she uh, wrote a letter pleading ill health um, as an excuse not to go to court. But why? Why did Mary write to Elizabeth? Why did Elizabeth plead illness and not go? What was all this about? Well, let me give you some context to this. Let me give you some background. In 1553, after uh, coming to the throne of England, after removing uh, Lady Jane Grey from the throne, Mary I decided um, that she needed to marry, she needed to secure the succession by having children. So she decided to marry Philip of Spain. Um, he was her cousin, Emperor Charles V's son, and she decided that he was the man that she was going to marry. Now, Parliament tried to dissuade Mary from doing this, from her marriage plans, knowing that an alliance with uh, the man that would become King of Spain and therefore rule both Spain and England and put Spanish interests first, it wouldn't be a popular match. Uh, it wouldn't go down well with everyone. But Mary was determined to, determined to go ahead with the match. She wanted to marry Philip. That is what she was going to do. Now, in late November 1553, so just a few months after she came to the throne, because she came to the throne in July 1553, a group of men, including Thomas Wyatt the Younger, who was, of course, the uh, son of Thomas Wyatt the Elder, uh, poet and diplomat, um, this group of men, including him, and also later Henry Grey, Duke of Suffolk, Lady Jane Grey's father, decided that a military coup, um, a rebellion, uh, was the only way of stopping Mary from going ahead with um, her marriage to Philip. Their idea was to organise risings in different parts of England, the West Country, Herefordshire, the Midlands and Kent, and to depose Mary and to replace her um, on the throne with her younger half-sister Elizabeth, um, who they um, believed would then marry Edward Courtenay. Uh, so that was the that's that's a very brief kind of uh, background to what was going on, but that was their idea. These organised risings in different parts of the country, the removal of Mary, and putting her Protestant half sister on the throne. Unfortunately for the conspirators, but fortunately for Mary, by the end of December fifteen fifty three. Rumours that trouble was brewing uh, began to spread and reached um, Mary's Privy Council. And in January 1554, Edward Courtney spilled the beans of what he knew of the rebellion and their plans to Stephen Gardner, Bishop of Winchester. So they got Mary's council, found out what was going on. On the 25th of January 1554, Thomas Wyatt raised his standard in Maidstone in Kent um, and other rebels in the county made simultaneous proclamations in Rochester, Tunbridge, Malling and Milton. 
On the 26th of January, 1554, on this day, Mary made the decision to write to Elizabeth, who was away from court at Ashridge, um, because Elizabeth was, of course, implicated in this plot, seeing as the rebels were seeking to depose Mary and put Elizabeth on the throne. Now, Mary didn't openly accuse Elizabeth of being involved. In the letter, she told Elizabeth of the rebellion, you know, I'm informing you of of this trouble, and asked her to come to court saying that it was for Elizabeth's, you know, own safety that she move from um, her property and come to court where she would be safe. But this letter must have worried Elizabeth um, because she replied straight away on the same day. And here is an excerpt from a record of her letter from the Calendar of State Papers, Spain. Although by neglect of my duty, most noble queen, I might incur blame for not having sent your highness any news of my doings since I left your court, yet I trust that your grace of your noble nature and inclination will excuse me and attribute this shortcoming to its true causes. I have been troubled since my arrival at my house with such a cold and headache that I've never felt their like, and especially during the last three weeks, I've had no respite because of the pain in my head and also in my arms. I have several times had occasion to offer your highness my humble thanks for having sent to inquire after my health and for the plate that you gave me, but I now have a still more pressing call to do so, for you have been pleased not only to write me a letter with your own hand, which I know is tedious to you, but also to tell me of the conclusion of your marriage and of the articles to accompany it. This is a deep and weighty matter, but I have no doubt that it will redound to the glory of God, the repose of your majesty, and the safety and preservation of your kingdoms. Elizabeth finishes the letter by saying, And as I know of no one more bound by duty and inclination to wish your highness all prosperity than myself, so no one shall be found, though comparisons be odious, more ready to pray God for you, or more desirous of your greatness. And so, madam, fearing to importune your majesty, I will consign you to the creator's keeping and make an end to this letter. So there we have Elizabeth excusing herself from appearing at court due to an illness. She has a cold, a headache. She's had pain in her head and arms for three weeks and she just can't travel. That is her excuse. Now, Mary sends her royal physicians to check on Elizabeth, to check that Elizabeth is telling the truth. And luckily for Elizabeth, they indeed find her ill in bed. So um, she was, seems to have been telling the truth, although I suspect she was also very fearful that uh, she was going to um, be implicated by the royal council in this trouble. Um, So Elizabeth is there keeping a low profile at Ashridge and in the meantime Mary begins rallying her troops. Now the rebellion known as Wyatt's Rebellion or Wyatt's Revolt was a complete failure in the end uh, because the rumours, you know, rumours got out, Mary and her troops were prepared. Mary was victorious. She managed to rally London against Wyatt and when he tried to march on London it was a complete failure. Um, Now Wyatt uh, ended up having to surrender and of course was taken into custody and imprisoned but he refused to implicate Elizabeth in any way. Mary's Privy Council really wanted, you know, names from him and really wanted to know how much Elizabeth was involved in the rebellion, but he refused to implicate her in any way. Elizabeth, who was still pleading sickness, was forced eventually to travel to London after Mary sent three of her councillors to Ashridge to escort Elizabeth from Ashridge to London. And she was taken to Whitehall Palace, where she stayed until Palm Sunday, that's the 18th of March, 1554, when she was taken to the Tower of London. Must have been an incredibly scary time for her. 
Thomas Wyatt was executed on the 11th of April 1554 after giving a rousing speech on the scaffold proclaiming Elizabeth's innocence. Elizabeth was, of course, interrogated several times while she was in the tower, but she stuck to her story. She claimed she was innocent, had no knowledge of the rebellion, was not seeking you know, to depose her sister. Fast forward to May 1554, so she was imprisoned on the 18th of March 1554. On the 19th of May 1554, so just two months, months after she'd entered the tower confines, but on the anniversary of her mother's execution, because Anne Boleyn was executed on the 19th of May, 1536, a rather sort of poignant day for Elizabeth, Elizabeth was finally released from the Tower of London, but released into house arrest. So she was going to be kept an eye on. She may have got away with her life, unlike Wyatt, who was executed, but her half-sister, the Queen, did not trust her in any way, and Elizabeth was going to be carefully watched. So there you go, that's what this letter that was written by Mary and the reply written by Elizabeth on 1554, on this day in 1554, was all about this sort of rebellion and whether Elizabeth was implicated. While I think about it, I just want to recommend some books on Mary and Elizabeth. Uh, David Starkey's book, Elizabeth, which is about Elizabeth's um, upbringing, her early life and her early reign, is a fantastic read, one I use a lot for research because it's uh, also very well referenced. Um, another one that I've used a lot is Elizabeth I Collected Works. Now, this has speeches that Elizabeth wrote, it has letters, it has poetry, it also has some photos and plates of, uh, you know, letters and that. But yes, and it's um, in um, date order, chronological as well. Like this section is prayers from 1558 to 1572. So it's Elizabeth's own works, and that's a really, really good resource. Um, one of my favourite biographies of Mary Tudor, I do like Linda Porter's biography of Mary the First, but also this one is a great read, uh, Mary Tudor, Princess Bastard Queen by Anna Whitelock. So just some recommended reading if you want to find out more about the uh, daughters of Henry VIII. Well, I will see you tomorrow with my next On This Day in Tudor History, but you can subscribe using the little red button here uh, to this channel to be notified of new videos as they come out. I do hope you're enjoying them. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>